going on everybody? I want to start this video out by saying thank you for all of the great feedback on the Create Animated Pixel Visualizers with Photoshop and After Effects video. In this video, I mentioned if we hit 2000 likes, I would make this part two covering 3D pixel art. You guys absolutely smashed that goal within the very first day. So today we're going to be talking all about 3D pixel art. So we're going to start off with these references here. Um, this is Juice World End of the Road. We also have Trippy Red, Matt Hardy. Some really beautiful visuals in that nostalgic retro style. I love all the things you're able to do with this. So in this video, we're going to talk all about creating your own 3D custom characters. We're going to talk about animating them, adding that retro pixel look, and bringing it all back into After Effects and Premiere to render. So these visuals were created by Lord Stingray. Also shout out to Mooch, the director here. He's the one who's bringing together these unique styles to this music culture. And I think that seeing this is a great thing because it really is implementing all these unique artists with these unique styles and it's like a breath of fresh air to be honest I love seeing stuff like this so the guy who animated those videos is Lord Stingray I'm gonna leave his Instagram down below if you want to follow him and check him out really beautiful stuff awesome work so we're gonna be using a blender for this and my main goal here is to keep this as beginner friendly as possible so even if you've never heard of blender if you've never used blender you guys can take something away from this uh, Blender is 100% free, so if you'd like to, the download link will be down in the description. Because I want to keep this beginner friendly, I know there's a lot of different skill levels here. If you guys would like, you can just straight up download my 3D character that I modeled here, and then use the timestamps in this video to pixelize him, to animate him, or you can find tons of free 3D models on the internet, uh, even Mixmo, which we're going to be using for animating later. You can sign into this with your Adobe subscription. They even have a bunch of free characters here, uh, which you can choose from. So if you'd like to just take baby steps, Steps, all of those free downloads will be in the description but for those of you who want to build this from the ground up like I did we're gonna talk a little bit about how I modeled this and more importantly how I customized it the style of the character is really up to you there's hundreds of tutorials on the internet for blender of modeling different types of characters the one I went for here is actually from Animal Crossing and I'm not gonna go into fully how to model it there's already awesome tutorials like this one by the observatory where they show you the step-by-step -step. so again find the art style of the character you're trying to create just do a quick little YouTube search to be able to model within blender it's not as hard as you may think or use my reference materials down below not only will I include this one I'm also going to include this project file here where it's essentially just the model so you don't have to do the modeling but you can follow along with me for the designing and the look and feel all right so once you've either modeled your character from scratch to your liking or downloaded the file which I provided below let me show you how we can customize this character add your own facial features change the colors change the hair etc so once you open the file it's going to look something like this first thing you want to do is up in the top right here this is the different shading so you have your wireframe viewport shading it'll probably be defaulted at this normal view just showing the mesh we want to go over to rendered view here so that we can actually see the colors so over on the right here in this collection you see all the different parts of the model everything is separated into different parts and if you ever want to change the color of the clothes the skin etc all you need to do is select whatever you'd like to change so let's change the color of the pants you want to use these little windows on the right and at the bottom find your material properties so we'll click that and you're going to see the base materials which i created here just a normal base color and we'll talk about adding designs etc but for now let's just start with changing the color if you scroll down a tiny bit here you can see this base color click that the lightness is dragged all the way down so let's just put that up you can use this here to change the clothes now notice how whenever I do this it's changing not only the pants but also the shirt that's because this same clothing material here is linked to both the torso and the pants so if you ever want to change the color of one specific thing just follow these steps so this is a very important thing to know in blender knowing how to change between your object mode and your edit mode so we're going to switch over to edit mode you can also quickly do that by clicking tab if you're completely new use these little buttons for your navigation or quick shortcuts hold shift and mouse wheel to pan control and mouse wheel to zoom and then just mouse wheel to rotate so changing the color of only one thing in edit mode i'm going to click on the pants here and i'm just going to click a to select all so it selected every part of the pants again in material properties you click this little button in the top right add material slot and then click new go ahead and just name that pants color again just select your base color so maybe just go for like green and then since this is already selected we just click assign so easy as that we created a new material and we assigned it to only the pants just by selecting the geometry there we can do the exact same with the shirt so we select torso 
And you see how the torso makes up the arms as well as the shirt. So let's only select the shirt. Tab into edit mode. And this time, instead of clicking A to select all, because we don't want to change the arms, we're going to select the shirt and click Control L. So that's going to select all of these polygons here, which are linked in this sort of island, this section. You can do the same for the back. Just hold down Shift, click Control L. So now you've selected only the shirt. So again, in your material properties, just click this button. You can click to make another new material, or you can apply one of the materials you've already created. So let's click this plus sign and click new and we'll name this shirt color and for our shirt color let's just go with black so we'll just drag the lightness all the way down and we'll click assign so that's the basics of manually assigning different colors to different parts of your character pretty easy now in terms of the skin color this is actually already connected to all the different parts here so you don't need to manually assign that you can just click skin color which should already be here in your project file and then just change the base color. All right, so you have the basics of changing the colors down. Now let's go and get a little bit more in depth. We're gonna talk about UVs and how we can use Photoshop to create our own designs for different parts of the face, the shirt, whatever. And to keep it simple, we're gonna start by just adding a graphic onto the shirt. So in edit mode once more, we're going to select the torso and I'm going to click on the shirt and click Control L just to select the front of the shirt. So once I've done that, in the bottom left here, you're gonna see this little drop down menu if you just click here. And this is going to allow you to change this bottom section to any different layout here. So let's go ahead and change to the UV editor. So what you're gonna see in this bottom window here is the UV mapping of the shirt. So this is pretty much just a map for projecting 2D images onto a 3D surface. And I've already gone ahead and unwrapped all of these different parts for you. So if you did download this base model here, it should also include all of these little UV unwrap maps, which you can use as a reference in Photoshop. Quickly, just to show you how I actually did that, all I did was, again, click Control L to select the area that I'd like, and then I clicked U, and then unwrap. Once you've done that, you should see this here. And if you'd like to save that Photoshop template that I was just talking about, in the top left, you just change to your UV editing tab. Once you have that set up, you go to UV, and you click Export UV Layout. So that's how you can export your own little UV maps, which you can then open up in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and do that now. And then in Photoshop, I'm going to click open. And again, here is my shirt UVs that I saved from Blender. So this will come included. You won't have to unwrap it like I just showed you. You can just select the UV. We also have one for the face, which we'll talk about later. But select the UV, click open. And again, you can see the little lines as a reference for where we need to place our image to make it fit. So let's go ahead and just add a background color to this. In the bottom right of Photoshop, I'm just going to click to create a new layer. If you don't have Photoshop, you could also do this with GIMP, which is free. Select that second layer, and let's just grab our paint bucket tool, and I'll just make the background of the shirt gray or black, and just click here. Let's take that background and just drag it below our wireframe here so you can see everything. And now you just create a design, or I just pulled a trippy red t-shirt design from the internet and pasted it here. You can just right click and copy back in Photoshop, Control V, and you can just line that up inside the area of the wireframe. So I'm gonna go over to the right and just select this lasso tool. And I'm going to just draw around the graphic because we don't need the little mock-up in the back. Control J, just to duplicate the area that's in that selection. So you can delete this bottom layer and we only have what we lassoed out. So to make it blend a bit better, you can see these rough edges. I'm gonna select that graphic layer and just grab my eraser tool and change my opacity for that tool to something like 28, and then just start sort of erasing these edges so that that hard line isn't as apparent. So once you've softened up that edge, we don't want the wireframe to actually show on our 3D model. So let's just hide the visibility of the UV map and then file save as, save this as a PNG. It's pretty easy to paste this onto our shirt. First, let's select where we'd like to place the graphic, which again is right on the front of the shirt. So we switch back over to edit mode and mine was already selected before. Let's just click and again, control L. You'll see only the front of the shirt is selected. And now instead of this UV editor, I'm gonna click and change to my shader editor. We're gonna go ahead and create a new material for the shirt graphic. So again, in my material properties menu, I'm gonna click the plus sign in the top right and we're gonna click new. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this shirt. And you'll see again, now that I have my shader editor open down here, all I have to do is actually add the image that we just made from Photoshop. 
So I'm going to click Shift A to add. And I'm going to go down to texture and we're going to add an image texture. So we'll put that node right there. Connect the color of this image texture node to the base color of our principal BSDF, just like that. Then we're gonna click open and just load in the file that we just saved from Photoshop. So once you've done that, to actually see it on your shirt, we need to assign that material. So we already have it selected. All we have to do is just click assign. So that's an easy way to actually paste any sort of Photoshop graphic onto any part of your model. Now let's go ahead and design the facial features. So we're going to use pretty much the exact same steps here. We're going to select the head object and go into edit mode. So with the head selected to give you a better idea of this, we're going to click in the bottom left and change from our shader editor to our UV editor once again. So go to UV editor and then we're going to select the front of the face here because that's where we like to place the features. So again, we have it all kind of seamed out. So this is where our eyes will be. We just click Control L to select that island. Hold down Shift, click Control L for the mouth bottom part of the face. And then if you'd like to, I was basing it after Trippy Red. He has some sort of face tattoos. So you guys could also just hold down Control and also select like the forehead area so that nothing is being cut off. And if you look down in the UV editor, you're again going to see those maps. So you can take those maps and just kind of space them out or scale them up a tiny bit, something like that, and just to kind of make it neat and to fit this. And if you're not seeing that here, again, what you would do is click U unwrap, but I've already unwrapped it and I've already exported out our little UV template, which we can use for Photoshop. So again, to do that, I went to UV editing and I just clicked UV export UV layout. All we need to do is go into Photoshop. So go ahead and open those up in Photoshop and we're gonna do the exact same thing we're going to fill in the base color for our face and then we're going to draw in some eyes, a mouth, etc. So to get the exact same skin color that we set up earlier, let's go back into Blender and then let's go to our material properties in the bottom right and selecting the skin color material where all we did was just change the base color. If you want to get the exact same color, you just click on the little color as if you were going to change it. Go over to hex and you have the exact color code right here. So you can just control C to copy that and then in Photoshop Let's create a new layer for the background. So create a new layer. Let's go to our paint bucket tool and then click to select the color and then just control V to paste in the exact skin color so that it matches. Click to fill that and drag the background below our UV map layer here. And now we're ready to start drawing in some facial features. So if you're not good at drawing, I recommend you use some reference images. Like I mentioned, I modeled this after the Animal Crossing style model, so that it's kind of cartoony and basic. And they have a lot of reference images for the different facial features, the different mouths, the different noses, etc. So I'm just gonna right click and copy this. And then in Photoshop, I'm going to click Control V and let's rename that to reference. What you can do is actually select that reference layer and just lower the opacity a bit so that you can kind of see through. And then you select it and click Control T and you can scale it up to properly have the right sizing for where you're going to draw this. We can change the scaling a bit later. But again, let's draw the eyes on this eyes island. If you remember before, this is the mapping for our eyes. This is the mapping for the mouth or the bottom part of the head. And this was the forehead where you can put in some forehead tattoos like Trippy Red has. So with the reference in the bottom right, I'm going to click to create a new layer. And with this new layer, I'm going to use my brush tool just to kind of draw in the exact same shapes as the eyes here. So I'll name this layer eyes on the left. I'm going to grab my brush tool. You can use your bracket keys just to make that larger or smaller. And you want to select maybe something like this soft round brush and we'll change the color to black. So I'm going to hold down control alt and use my mouse wheel here. And I'm just going to rough draw in the outline of this eye. And then I'm going to use my paint bucket tool on the left just to fill in the different parts. So I'll fill in the white of the eye and then I'll fill in whatever color I'd like to make the eye. So just filling in with red. So if you hide your reference layer, here's what that looks like. We have our painted on eyes. If you need to, you can control T and scale those eyes up. So as an example, let's see what this looks like on our model. So we're going to hide the visibility of the UV just like that. And then file save as we'll save this as a PNG and I'll name this tut eyes and then back in blender let's just go to our normal layout and edit mode and we're going to create again a new material for the face again to our material properties so i'm going to click the plus sign i'm going to click new and we'll name that face you can just click this yellow dot next to base color and just load in an image texture straight from there so we'll click there 
and then we'll go ahead and click open. So we'll open up tutorial, face texture, and you're not seeing anything, and that's because we need to assign. So just click assign, and there you go. So you can see what you drew in Photoshop on your face and you can use this as a reference for if you need to scale up or change the positioning so let's start adding a couple more facial features here we'll go back into photoshop and turn on our uv reference just by clicking on the visibility and let's just turn on our actual animal crossing reference <laughs> so once you've filled in everything go ahead and hide the uv file save as you can overwrite what you're working with before and then back in blender in your material properties go ahead and cancel the old face texture and then open it back up again and you can see how with our original uv mapping these are reversed so let's go back into photoshop and just quickly fix that and then Control t and rotate all right guys so at this point you should have a basic idea of how to customize your character to your liking really just knowing how to select different parts of the model in edit mode and then using those uv layouts with photoshop to create the look and feel and then assigning the materials to the selection so when it comes to adding hair the tutorial that i follow to actually model this from scratch from again the observer Observatory. And I also want to mention a great tutorial. I recommend you watch this. If you can learn how to model, you really can build anything from the ground up. But anyways, at the end of the tutorial, he shows you how you can create hair just by separating, extruding, and uh, shaping the hair to your liking. So I'll link the full tutorial set here if you'd like to learn how to create hair that way. I actually made my own hair a different way using Blender's built-in particle hair system. So let me show you quickly how to do that. And what I did was sort of select this scalp area here. That's why you can tell there's a little bit Bit of color difference so you can see which parts I actually separated for this so I'm gonna hold down shift or you can use your selection tools here and just again select this part of the scalp as you can see just held down shift and selected parts of the head where the hair would be once I did that I just clicked P to separate and we're just going to click selection so now you'll see we have a different object here we kind of split the head into two parts so the separated part I'm gonna double click and name that scalp and if I click tab back into object mode you can see that selection there now with the scalp selected what I did was actually click down here to particle properties and I'm gonna go ahead and click this plus sign like we do with materials so click plus and then I'm going to click hair. And you can see all this craziness growing out. So let me turn off my webcam for now just because this is a little bit computer intensive. I don't want my webcam to be glitching. Make sure your file saving as you do go along with this. So let's go ahead and change the number of hair down to something like 500. And let's check on hair dynamics. We're gonna put the vertex mass under structure to one kilogram. Let's scroll all the way down here to hair shape. And we're just going to take the, the diameter root and the tip and we'll put that up to six for each. Let's go up to our render properties here, and then under the hair tab, we're going to change the shape type from strand to strip, and then that should show you a little bit of the depth here. So if we go back to our particle system, again, now you can take your diameter root, play around with that a little bit more if you like. So we're gonna take the count, and I'm gonna lower that to maybe around like 150, and then under physics properties tab, let's go ahead and just click collision. So now if you change this bottom editor here to the normal timeline, you can click play and you're going to see how these strands sort of fall down like this. So if you need to, you can keep messing around with the number and just keep testing that simulation until you get something that you like. And of course, we're going to keep editing the look of this. And I think that looks fine. Let's click over to the modifier properties tab. And then for the particle settings here, let's go ahead and just click convert. All right. So now you're going to see this mesh that we just created. We can double click and name that hair. Let's go up to object. We're going to go down to convert to, and we're going to convert it to a curve. So now in our object data properties, you'll see it's a little curve. We can change things around from there. So down in the bevel section, we're going to go ahead and take this depth and just bump that up a tiny bit. You can see how the mesh is starting to take place here. Check on fill caps. Then we're going to go up to object and shade smooth. So now we can switch over to edit mode. And if you guys need to, you can delete any of the strands that you don't like. So for example, if there's something covering the eyes like this strand, for example, you can just select control L and delete vertices. Also, we have the particle simulation still kind of poking out through the scalp. So we can just click on scalp. You see this little blue wrench, just click on that. And then when you click over to your particle properties, here's your particle settings that we set up earlier. What I did was I just hid these in the render and the viewport so that I can edit the hair if I need to later, but it's not visible over top. And that looks good. We'll go back to object mode and obviously everything is very choppy. So we're gonna do some sculpting just to fix that. So we're gonna select the hair and click control A. We're gonna click visual geometry to mesh. 
And then we can go in the top left and change from object mode to our sculpting mode. You have a bunch of cool little brushes over here on the left, which can help you change things around, such as the layer, which can help you fill in some of these parts, but we'll do that later. First, let's go and add a little bit more of texture to this. So we're gonna scroll down and grab the mesh filter brush. And if you just click and sort of drag a tiny bit to the right, you can see how it's sort of distorting this. So I'm gonna go a little bit like this just to add a bit more texture to the mesh. And then I'm going to grab this inflate brush and just start making little circles here to fill in any of these holes. All right guys, and that is how I created the hair. Of course, what you guys can do is just pop over to your material properties create a new material and choose whatever color you'd like. Let's go over to object mode and we have some quick and easy hair. All right guys, so now I'm gonna quickly mention how we can take this character and add any animation to it. It's very simple, we're going to use Mixamo, um, which actually creates a rig for you, so I didn't do any rigging on this character. All you have to do is in the top right, go ahead and hold down shift and just select all of these different objects. We can ignore the area light in the camera for now. And then we're gonna go up to file, export, and we're gonna export this as an FBX. So once you've exported that as an FBX, you want to go to mixmo.com. Again, this is an Adobe product, so you can just sign in with your Adobe ID if you do have one. Just click upload to upload your FBX character. Go ahead and assign the joints like I'm doing here. And then once it processes a bit, you're gonna get this little preview, and then you can choose from this giant library of different animations. So let's create something cool, and I'm gonna go for sort of this sword drawing animation. So I just looked up sword. Go ahead and apply that, and then download the FBX with animations. So once you've downloaded that file from Mixamo, just go up to File, Import, and we're going to import in an FBX. And then here's mine holding sword animation. So you'll see we now have this armature here, and if we open that up, here's all the different parts. So I'm just going to create a new collection by right clicking here and new and let's drag this out and we're going to name this animated character and we'll take that armature with all the children and we're going to just drag that into this collection. So now let's select the armature and just click G on our keyboard to grab and we're going to move them over in the bottom left make sure you're in your timeline editor here. And you can see if I just scroll along, we now have this cool animation for our character. So easy as that, just using Mixamo. So now we're gonna connect a sword to his hand because again, that's the sort of animation that we were going for. And this is very easy. First off, let's hide our tutorial example version here. I'm just gonna go ahead and just hide the visibility for that collection. What I did was just look up free sword on Turbo Squid and downloaded this one. It also comes with a shield and of course has all the textures. Plus it's a Blender file, so we can just download that zip. Once you've downloaded that back in Blender, I'm gonna go to File, Import, FBX. And here's the sword and shield folder. We're gonna open that up and sword FBX. Let's go ahead and import that. So again, click G just to grab that and move it over. And let's apply the materials. So, so we're going to select the sword object here and let's go down to the material properties tab and click new. And what we're gonna do is just load in the textures that came with this file. So just click on the yellow dot next to base color and click image texture. And then we're gonna click open. And let's just navigate again to this folder textures and sword low default material here's the normal metallic and the albedo so we'll click that one and open it up so now we have the base colors let's load in the normal and the metallic to give it a little bit more detail i'm going to click in the bottom left to my shader editor just to see these nodes uh, and if you look at the normal bsdf here you see we have this metallic value and then you also have this little normal value what we're going to do is just click shift a we're going to go and add another image texture. So texture, image texture. Let's load this first one, the color into our normal. Click open and then just load in the normal texture that comes with the sword. We're going to do the same for the metallic. Again, shift A, image texture, load that into metallic and then open the metallic texture. All right, so we have our sword and now it's connected to our hand. So the way we're going to do that is with a constraint. So if we select the sword again in our object menu, you're gonna see this little blue tab to my right, object constraint properties. Click on that and we're gonna go ahead and click this drop down. and under relationship, we're going to click child of. So for our target here, let's go ahead and just click and you have all these drop downs. We're gonna select armature and then it's gonna give you this bone value. This is where you select the bone that you'd like to connect this object to. So click and we're just going to scroll down here until we find the right hand. So right there, Mixmo rig right hand. You'll see the little blue line connecting to it. So now if I was to switch from my shader editor to my timeline and just click play, 
the sword is going to be moving along with the animation of the hand. So now we just need to position it so it's actually in the hand. So let's click G and just move it over there. And then I'm going to click R and rotate it, something like that. And there you guys go. Now our character has a sword. Now the only issue here is sometimes with these animations, sometimes it may phase through um, the mesh. So for example, you see how it moves through its leg there. What we can do is just select the sword and then click this little yellow square for our object properties. And you can actually keyframe the rotation so it just kind of dodges and doesn't phase through our character. So right here under transform, you'll see rotation. You can kind of just see what those look like. These three dots on the right, we're just going to go right before it moves through his leg and just click to activate those keyframes. Then we're going to drag a bit. And whenever it goes through his leg, we're just going to take these values and just kind of rotate it a tiny bit. And an important step here, once you've made an adjustment, you see how it's yellow. You always want to click the keyframe button again to make that the sort of greenish yellow. And that means that the keyframe is placed. So now whenever we go through, it won't be going through his leg. We've now given our character a weapon. I love how Blender makes that process very easy. So now it comes down to the environment and adding our pixel retro look, the main bread and butter of this tutorial. For the environment, of course, there's so many different tutorials out there on modeling different environments from scratch with a retro style. I'll leave some link down below. Now, I actually found this website here that has all of the resources from Mario Kart 8, including all of the models, all of the maps, now, I'm not sure about the usage rights for this, but if you want to, you can experiment with this, maybe change things around. See, they even have these cool hammer knights here. Um, and if we go down to courses, what I did was just select Bowser's Castle and download this model. You're going to get OBJs, FBXs, all the textures. So back in Blender, file import OBJ. And then here's the folder I downloaded and here's the castle. So we'll import that. And you'll see if I scroll out here, we now have this giant... Um, Mario Kart map in our scene. So that's pretty cool. Again, I don't know the usage rights. I don't know if you should be using this for commercial um, projects and stuff, but I think it is a pretty useful learning material. See, we have all this craziness, all these different parts, hundreds of different parts of the castle. I'm just going to hold down shift in object mode, control J just to join them. And for some reason, we also have all these ones. So that's just putting them into one object here. So now we can just select this single object and click G to move it around. You can click S to scale it down. You want to select your camera object and in your object properties here, you're going to see you can change your X, Y, and Z. So just change those values until you have your starting position. And then like we did with the rotating sword, just click to set a keyframe. Then you scroll a bit to your next position using those values once more, and you just click to set another keyframe. That way we have a little animation where our camera is just panning in. So simple as that. So to create the actual pixelated look, there are a couple of ways to do this. What I like to do is just go to render, render image, and you wanna just get this first result. Here's what it looks like once we add what I'm about to show you. Once you've rendered your image out, you wanna to go to the compositing tab, and we're gonna add in all of these different values here. So let's start from scratch. So once you're in the compositing tab, we're gonna click use nodes. So we're gonna click shift A, and we're going to search for scale and we're also going to select that scale and click shift d and just drag that duplication over and then we're going to go ahead and click shift a and search for pixelate let's click in here for our render layers node let's connect image to the image of our scale and then image from scale to color of pixelate then let's take the color from pixelate place that in our second scale and image into our composite node next we're going to go ahead and shift a and make a viewer node, connect image into here. And you can see the image render that we fired off a little bit ago. So you can click V to zoom this out and shift A. We're gonna search for a value node, place that here and shift A. We're gonna search for a math node. We're gonna change add to divide, change value to one and connect the value to this bottom value here. Then you're gonna take the value and just connect to the X and Y of our second scale, such as this and then take the value of our divide and plug that into the X and Y of our first scale. So now that we have this set up in this value node, you can actually just take this value and just start bumping it up. And the more you bump that up, you're gonna see the more pixelated 
this becomes. This is ultimately how you can choose the amount of pixelation that you'd like. See, the more I push that up, the more the details are getting crunched. So I went for something like seven. You guys can play around with that value. Also, shout out to CG Smoothie. He made the original tutorial showing how to do this node setup. There's actually a good amount of tutorials showing different ways to pixelate in Blender. So I'm going to link a few of those below because there are alternate methods. So once you have the look that you'd like, all you need to do is set up your output. So let's go to output properties and mine is 1920 by 1080 file format TIFF. Click this folder here to choose where you'd like to export the image files. So I just made a little folder by right clicking new folder and name that render animation and then just go to render render animation. So once the blender render is finished, you can open something like After Effects and just right click in your project bin, go to import multiple files, go ahead and navigate to the folder that we set up in Blender. So here's mine render animation, select the first image, import as footage and click import. And then you can click OK and then done. And it should open up this comp here. If we click play, here is our rendered animation. Looks really awesome. I love the retro style. Now what I did was actually add a little bit of a brightness and contrast for color correction, as well as a LUT in Premiere once I was finished. So you guys can edit this to your liking in your video editing software. So I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. Of course, you can render straight from After Effects or use a dynamic link with Premiere and render there. I had a bunch of fun making this because again, like I said earlier, you can create entire worlds, entire characters from scratch, especially if you take the time to learn how to model your own different characters and then use this video for all of the customizing. If you want to see any more videos on this topic, maybe we could create an entire series out of this. Slap a like on the video. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you in the next one.